Most of you are aware, this is already old news, but I just wanted to kind of highlight it because I think it's interesting to talk about in terms of why I think streetwear is one of the most exciting industries or scenes out there, especially for somebody who wants to maybe go into fashion and why I fell in love with streetwear from the moment I got into it many, many, many years ago. So if I'm sure most of you are aware that Heron Preston, the guy obviously with a with the, with the brand of, you know, of his namesake, did a collaboration with Bape recently. And he put out these uh, Bapesters with some clothing and stuff, with a link to it. And it's really cool and interesting because it's a really cool and interesting story about Heron Preston and Bape and his history with sneakers in general. And he kind of highlighted it in this little video that he put up on his Instagram, which has been shared also on Twitter via the account that I follow, which I love, called Over and Under. And it says, and he kind of, kind of speaks about the inspiration behind the Bapesters that he's put together and how it started from him making essentially bootlegs using the classic Air Force One mid in all white and then cutting out a Bapester um, star swoosh thing out of Gucci fabric and or Louis Vuitton fabric and then printing or pasting those onto the Air Force One similar to what uh, people used to do back in the day with Air Force Ones where they used to print or cut out real pieces of, of Gucci Louis Vuitton fabric and place it on the sides here in the UK what we used to have was we used to have this um, shop I forgot what it was called is it Global Sports or something else um, and Wiley was kind of famous for wearing them where they would airbrush a design on the swoosh or they take off the swoosh and put like a bandana print on it or something of those kind of lines. Those are really popular back in the day. And they were sold for many, for, you know, for hundreds and hundreds back in the day too. Um, especially considering, you know, what we kind of charge for those kind of things nowadays. But anyway, this is Heron Preston in his own words um, regarding his inspiration for doing the BAPE collaboration. Back in 2015, I introduced this project called The Street Sweepers, where I hacked an Air Force One and remixed it. And I called this like an impossible collaboration of three brands that would never, ever work together in a million years. Nike, Gucci, and Bape. I even relabeled the insole with the OG hair and Preston label before they were orange. And I even started to redesign the packaging and write my name on top of the logo. I didn't really like how that looked. I even started to write street sweepers, but then I started to stencil it. I even had these Gucci trimmers in here, which are little scissors that could trim the side of the Gucci fabric when they would start to fray. But a couple years later, after 2015, Bape hit me up and invited me to do an official collaboration, right? So that's what informed the logo on the box. And this is actually a pair of samples here, you see. I didn't like the stitching here, so I switched it up to more tonal stitching. But that's what informed this whole entire project. It started off with the Street Sweepers back in 2015. Back and the funny thing is, this inspiration or this model or this idea should have happened long, long time ago. But the fact that they had to wait for somebody else to do something cool before they jumped on it says everything about where, you know, the dire straits that Bape is in. Like ever since Nigo was essentially booted out and kicked out of his own company and made to sell it for peanuts, this brand has been completely dying. And it's really sad for me because I'm an OG Bape fan. One of the first brands I bought when I first got into streetwear was obviously Supreme. No, was Bobby, was Hundreds, sorry, Bobby Hundreds, was the Hundreds, Bape, and Supreme. Those are the three brands I copped. I didn't even cop Stushi at the time. I think Stushi came later after the fact that I was really getting into street, which is really weird. I think Stussy might have even come after Obey. Absolutely redacted how I got there, but still, my introduction to streetwear was the hundreds, Bape and Supreme. But when I found Bape, it also kind of opened my eyes to everything concerning that side of fashion in terms of uh, J J Japan streetwear, um, you know, Tokyo, the Urahara scene, all that sort of stuff, Harajuku, like amazing stuff, right? I've got magazines here stacked full of old school magazines from, from Japan from yesteryears that focused on streetwear and all that sort of cool stuff. And obviously my heroes in that scene, Hiroshi Fujiwara, Nigo, Tetsu, Shin, all those amazing dudes that really set the precedent and set the ground for what we have going forward but the interesting thing i think about a heron Preston collaboration for me personally as an outsider and somebody also who's kind of known him from afar um and as a fan and somebody just kind of looking at it from as an observer because a few many many years ago it might have been like 2015 maybe 2013 i went to new york and um i actually met up with heron Preston. this was back when he used to do his blog that everyone was always checking out and he used to kind of document his time going to parsons university uh doing cool projects running around the city working in restaurants bumping into cool people it, it, it was basically like an instagram feed of a blog right but everyone used to check it out and he was really cool in terms of like putting himself out there. And I think he was the one person who kind of allowed or kind of showed me what you had to do to kind of make it. Because I think being in London, the kind of the kind of model 
Yeah, so being in London, the kind of, yeah, sorry, being in London, did I show the video? I think I probably showed it. Being in London, the model that we obviously saw being in London was that in order to be cool here, or in order to kind of get a cool job, you kind of had to be, how do you say? You kind of had to be plugged in with the right people. It wasn't really about your work. It was always about who you were standing next to, which I never really liked because I'm not really somebody that was ever comfortable with getting down on my knees and sucking anyone's dick, right? Especially you know, when it comes to stuff like shooting, when I knew my heroes and people that I was trying to aim to kind of get to and the level I wanted to be on was the Negos and the Roshi Fujiwaras of this world. And they were just doing the work and kind of putting dope shit out there and just continuing and rolling forward that way. I didn't need to have some marketing manager or flipping uh, seeding person telling me I had to pay my dues, which kind of obviously, you know, I think ended up costing me a lot of things and ended up probably shooting myself in the foot with a lot of stuff with how I spoke and how I carried myself. And it probably didn't do me any favors and I didn't with any friends. And maybe now at the moment, I'm kind of isolated from it and watch it from the outside as well because of that but regardless you know you make a decision you have to live with it as a man it is what it is but when I saw him pressing doing this thing what I realized is that no you can do two things at the same time you can put out the work I think at the time he was also doing that book that he did about downtown what was it called where he took pictures of all his friends and whatever remember that pink book I forgot what it was called he was around that time he was doing that stuff he also did that influential you know flipping uh, memorable interview with Heron, with Aaron Bondroff him standing in front of some blind some grills or whatever talking about his inspiration how he's coming up and what he's doing and whatnot. But what he proved was that you can do two things at the same time. You can be a social climber, a kind of smoocher, whatever it may be called. And you could also put out great stuff and show that you have the ability to, you know, uh, put your ideas into action. Like ship your ideas because everyone's got PSD files. Everyone's got PDFs. Everyone's got, you know, these fanciful ideas they want to do. But rarely do people actually put their money where their mouth is. Print T-shirts like he did with the Gucci thing. Um... Remember he did that white Gucci t-shirt, all these kind of cool projects he did on the side. And even when he was starting the Heron Preston brand, it kind of started mostly as a kind of conceptual art project. It kind of seemed like he was copying or going down the lane of of, of what Tom Sachs was doing, where he does where he does like um interesting projects that, you know, that kind of uh blend different genres. It could be sculpture, it could be art, it could be furniture, it could be installations, it could be performance art, publishing, clothing, all this sort of stuff are all in one. And obviously it landed here, it was supreme. But you obviously done the work and shipped. But the other interesting thing I think about this Aaron Preston story when it comes to Bape is that to me growing up or to me being part of the scene and seeing it from afar, he was never the fashion guy. He was never the cool looking guy in clothes. He was never the sneaker guy, even though back in the day, he was always known for having really cool sneakers because like me, he was also around the time when cool sneakers were sold. And because he just didn't sell none of his shoes and he kind of moved on, he wasn't that interested in sneakers anymore. When he looked back at his collection, he was like, wow, I've actually got some sick stuff here. Right. And I think he, did, he showed it already before. Right. He's going to sell some stuff on eBay. He's got some really great stuff like old Jordan 5s old Air Force One, Kojo JP, Nike's like crazy stuff his collection because he's buying the same time that I was buying it. But obviously I, myself, I ended up selling most of my stuff. He ended up keeping most of his stuff. But he was never the cool clothing guy. He was always, I think, the more so the cool idea guy, the dot connector, the, you would call him the communicator, right? Being able to communicate things. That's what probably he ended up doing some cool work with Yeezy, cool work with Kanye and all that sort of stuff. And with Virgil, like, yo, I think, that's maybe where his talent comes from that kind of ideation be able to tell a story through clothing world that sort of stuff but you never really saw him as a fashion guy which is what makes this achievement and this collaboration that much better even though i think the final product isn't that great i still think what it represents is far better than the actual product itself because what we have available in that collection is a classic bape head t-shirt with the star iron of it which is you know say la vie the t-shirt i don't know about the shape and stuff it's something that you have to kind of see in real life the shark hoodie i've always been a fan of the class again i come from you know shopping at the busy workshop store in upper james street i'm a person that was trying to back in the day find any picture that i could of the old nowhere shop that um nigo and jun takahashi used to run back in the day from undercover and nowadays that picture's everywhere honestly you can only you couldn't find even images of the inside of nowhere nowadays you've got hd pictures of this stuff all over the place but when i was buying bape the only shark hoodies that ever mattered was the olive green and the gray that was it. And maybe some colours here and there. Red. I remember he's seeing purple here and there. But block colours. Whenever they started including camos and prints in it, that's when I had to back out. Especially when they started doing, when, when flipping Bapel sold to IT, the shark motif got completely devalued when they started to print it on shorts and, and sweatpants and jeans and stuff and socks. Like, get the hell out of here. So me seeing, number one, a shark hoodie in camo, and not just one camo, two types of camo, 
You've got the classic olive kind of whatever camo that is in the brown and greens. And then you've got a purple blue camo. And then you've got a screen printed bape on the front of it with the hair and pressing again. Awful. Awful, awful, awful. Awful as a piece. Really, really bad, right? Then And, then, and again, how many logos do you need? You've got the front bape stuffing here you've got the hair and pressing underneath the thing then on the sleeves you've got the star then you've got the the classic target mark on all um bape shark hoodies that had it there and then you've also got the other orange label with the bape head and the hair and press on the side it's like so it's, it's overkill whereas i think the nicest thing in there, so actually the plainest thing is this and I think this actually suits Hair and Preston as a brand. If you think about Hair and Preston being, you know, starting from workwear and utility wear and all that sort of stuff. This sort of stuff is really, I think, really kind of speaks to the six. No, it's probably the best standout things in this collection, or this collaboration. And what it is, is the camo workers jacket and also the camo workers pant. Because essentially, this is like a double knee pant, which, you know, you would say Hair and Preston is kind of known for ma making those utility pants and that sort of stuff. And he's also, I think, personally known for wearing these kind of work jackets that he kind of wears into the ground, picks them up vintage, and then maybe kind of iterates it out into his own brand. And I think this is really well done. It's essentially a classic work jacket with some great little pockets hidden there on the front. You've got nice uh, front big pockets here as well, which I always love. I'm always a big advocate of the... Uh, Rick Owens uh, methodology when it comes to putting jackets together he always kind of come for it from a point of view of the jacket pockets always need to be big enough to carry a book and a, and a sandwich because you don't really see um, even in a as a brand Rick Owens there isn't necessarily like a side bag or like a satchel or whatever a lot of people carry the tote that sometimes you get if you shop in Rick Owens or sometimes they carry big bags but there's not really like a side bag a crouchement sort of swing usually the outerwear or the jackets the outerwear, the jackets, the pants, they always have big enough pockets to put a smartphone, a digital camera, some book, you, some Dostoevsky book you've been reading, uh, a sandwich or whatever it may be. And I love that these jackets have the same sort of thing. So a, a, a pocket big enough for a book and another pocket enough, big enough to put like a sandwich in it or whatnot. And then the pants are also fairly decent too. I love the label here and the waistband. I thought that's a really nice detail. Again, you can't see anything up front, but I think the shape is probably going to be quite cool. You've got this double knee feature here, reinforced, obviously taking inspiration from, you know, utility pants like from Dickies and Carhartt and whatnot. And I think these are, kind of say a lot about it overall but what i wanted to make this point about was that i think the hair impression story should be inspiration for most kids going forward especially kids who want to get into fashion because i never saw hair impression as a stylish dude i still don't think he's someone that you know in dresses entirely that well but i think his ideas applied in streetwear and then kind of superimposed through a fashion lens really work nowadays because essentially everybody wears streetwear in one way shape or form even though people like vanessa friedman's and all these you know glitzy flipping fashion journalists will always try and dog whistle us and say the return of tailoring is coming back which is essentially saying they want all the black and brown people to get out of their scene streetwear has been running it from day dot it's still running it now you see the work that Virgil's been doing r.i.p you see what matthew williams is doing at Givenchy. he's basically single-handedly brought them back into relevance like it or lump it with the stuff that he's doing there you see what kim jones is doing at dior obviously his history comes from streetwear all of these people have been grounded in that school and i think the reason why is because you're allowed to ideate in a way that probably you couldn't in fashion you're allowed just to kind of put your ideas forth and sometimes because these brands are so hungry for the hype they might latch on to you asking for a collab and then that creates your profile and then suddenly you go from a guy that just prints t-shirts and makes your own clothing to suddenly have a collaboration with one of the biggest and longest storied brands in the in the scene even though they're not what they used to be so i think if you want to get into fashion an actual clever way to get into it to kind of backdoor your way into it forget going to fashion school unless you want to learn pattern cutting and unless you want that connection unless you want to be taught by a very esteemed you know lecturer whatever it may be start a streetwear brand actually start making clothes think of different ideas you know deconstruct a hoodie make a perfect hoodie that what kanye has been on the mission to do with gap make your perfect sweatpants make your perfect coach jacket whatever take the staples of streetwear the baseball cap the hoodie the t-shirt the long sleeve the denim pants the jeans the the chino pants the shorts in the summer the vest the down jackets all those classic pieces in streetwear the baseball cap the trucker hat the dad hat the beanie and just reinterpret them in your own way and that would be a better way to get into fashion in the back doorway than would be to start in the fashion ten terms of things and be kind of pontificating about the cut of a pant about the pleat of this about this and that don't care 
capture the zeitgeist as Heron Preston did and actually capture kids' imagination and then you never know. Sky's that's definitely the limit because I never saw this happening for Heron Preston because again, like I said, the Heron Preston I knew was never cool in terms of clothes. He was cool as a person in terms of what he did, who he knew, how he presented presented the you know the stuff that he was into and on his blog and stuff. I even I remember the time even my blog back in the day. I think I even copied the layout of it if I'm not mistaken. I think if I can find it, let me see if I can find my old blog. Let me go and is it uh, is it was it was it what is it called again? Is it Wayback Machine, right? Wayback Machine. Let me see because I remember back in the day I even copied how like my layout of my blog was from the whole Heron Preston things and you'll be able to see it now once I get it up on here you'll be able to see you'll be like oh yeah if, if you read that blog back in the day you'll know straight away what I mean here uh let me get it up on here so let me do this let me take that away and let me do Agostino yeah, let me do agostino.co.uk that was my old blog back in the day right mad and I gave it up as well, that flipping URL. I'm pretty sure URL has been taken now anyway, isn't it? Right, let's see if it's still there. Agostino.co.uk. Let's see who's got that URL right now. Who's got it right now? Okay, no one. So anyway, um, this URL was this, right? And I'm pretty sure if I go to 2010, let me see here, Wayback Machine. I'm pretty sure you'll be able to see that my blog looked very similar to what Mr. Heron was doing back then. Let's see if I can get this up. Um, bear with me a second, bear with me a second, come on, come on, come on, yeah, look, see, if you knew this blog back then, you would know how it was laid out, and mine was similar to this, he was similar to this layout-wise, um, there was a banner here, um, blocked, H and, you know, it was all HTML coding on the archive bit, showing off all the posts you did back in the day, look at the blog, I did it 2006, all the way up to there, the big text, the pictures on the side here, the roll, all this stuff, look at all the stuff I've got here on my blog, um, titles from February Taurus Love Agostino another one Stoked with results now rock the jacket with pride DIY time I got this stick jacket from Nike SB skate metal 3-in-1 and it comes with patches so you can sew on been a minute since I used a bit of a needle thread quote of the day Visions is back I'm talking about loads of stuff on here my top picks on men's fashion week crazy sportswear design like all this stuff came from there so it's really cool to see where he's kind of got in his career and stuff in terms of what he's been able to do um, and then let's play the video here to end it and then we're gonna continue the video from Mr. Yeah, the jeans are overkill with the logos, man. Too much, man. The t-shirt's nice, though. Good song. The thing is, it's interesting too about kids nowadays. I think I think they actually like, that's maybe the reason why. So even though I'm cr criticizing this, I think they like this over logo, oh, um, this over logification of clothing. Because back in the day, I remember one of the signs that you knew a brand was dying was when it got popular and it suddenly started to bang its logo everywhere in front of everything. Usually the shapes of everything you would sell it. Supreme is even a good example. Supreme back in the day, you know the little tag they've got on their sh clothing, the little Supreme red tag. Sometimes on their clothes, they'd make it, it'll be tonal. So if you had like an olive jacket, it'd be a t olive like hang, like little tag underneath the, the hem, whatever, or the, or the seam, whatever it may be, right? Nowadays, that could never happen. It's always got to be red. And if it's not red, there'll be like a other thing that says Supreme on the sleeve or the shorts, even if they've decided to change. But back in the day, you could tell someone was wearing a Supreme coach jacket just from the shape, just from how the buttons were placed, whatever it may be. But now they have to let you know, no, this is Supreme. No, 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 it's Supreme. It's Supreme, it's Supreme, it's Supreme, it's Supreme. And I think maybe the kids sort of like this sort of stuff, but I, I can't imagine being okay with walking down the street and legitimately being like a walking billboard. Don't get me wrong, this t-shirt is cool. I think t-shirts are one thing, whatever. When it comes to jackets and stuff, like even the jeans I saw at the back, the jeans that I said, or the pants I said were, were not too bad. No, actually, so there's sweatpants all included. There's sweatpants included and they've got not only the logo on the front, they've also got a logo in the flipping butt cheeks. It's like, how much logos can you have, bruv? Like, look at that. So, so, so those are the double knee pants. The double knee pants I actually like, actually have vape at the back of the bum with hair and press like, so you, you know what I mean? You're literally riding hair and press bum, which is absolutely maddening. But hey, I mean, like, I think it's just too much. And as a shark hoodie too, the shark hoodie should be either in camo, one color, olive or gray. All this pattern stuff with the, with the screen print, that's just too much overkill for me anyway, personally. 
that work jacket is still fire don't get me wrong and the models make it look extra cool because they're all cool looking especially with the music and the background and stuff but it's just super overkill like it's just enough too much man but anyway regardless congratulations to him and like i said get involved in streetwear sky's the limit in that way don't go to the fashion side of things it's boring and you could do way more interesting and cool stuff i think if you angle it around the streetwear side of things but again what do i know 